Hello, friends. Welcome to another episode of It's Not All Rainbows. I'm your host, Lindsay Goodman. I'm a certified trauma recovery coach, and I'm also a survivor of abuse in a queer relationship. I'm here to help you figure out what's really going on in your relationship to help get you out and on the road to recovery. Today, I'm going to talk to you about something that some of y'all might not want to hear. That is why it's so important to stay single. Are you still here? Are you still with me? Why it's so important to stay single after abuse. And I'm even going to say after any kind of relationship. I am not a relationship expert. Like I know some of y'all are probably going online and looking at people who are like, I'm a relationship expert. I'm trained in relationship, whatever. This isn't me mocking those people who are offering that. That's great. I think we all could use some help on how to approach relationships and what not to approach because none of us were given any tools when it comes to this kind of thing. So yes, whatever kind of help you need to be able to figure out how to navigate this wild world we're living in. Um, But I personally believe that it is very important to take time after a relationship, even in a situationship, even a little whatever, because there's so much, there's just, there's so much. Um, So if you are willing to sit down and hear this information and listen to me, I have a feeling this is going to be one of my lower download numbers because I can tell when y'all want to hear a topic and when you don't, I'm just saying. Um, But I think this is really important to talk about. So before we dive in, let's talk about my struggles and successes. Um, A struggle is, okay, I have changed my schedule a lot. Um, I'm working at my son's school now twice a week, which means I took a huge pay cut to be able to do that and be with him. Um, and I'm giving up one of like my ongoing, um, money making gigs, like the main source of my income, because it's just not making me happy. And I'm very lucky to be able to do that. But that also means that I have to kind of like scramble in a lot of other ways. So I'm like working weekends sometimes. And my days tend to be a lot fuller because I have to like, sort of, I have to, I still need to make that income. So I'm making up for it in other ways. Whereas this, I'm trying not to like get too far into this, but it used to be like, okay, you work this day, this day, this day, this is how much money you'll make, whatever. I'm a sign language interpreter. If you don't know that. Um, and now instead of doing that, um, I'm trying to be happier and like, like what I do a little bit more. And that also means that my schedule is just up, down, back, like all kind of whatever. Um, but that is how it always used to be for me. I always used to have that kind of just freelance life picture, any freelancer, you know, where you just like never know what's going to happen. Every day is different. It's hard to nail us down for a cup of coffee because our different, like our days are just like whack. But so that's been really stressful. But also, like I said, I am already feeling happier. I'm already finding more joy in the things that I am doing. Um, I'm not sure what the finances are going to look like for a little while here. Um, but you know, sometimes like as long as, as long as you're able to like pay your bills and, um, you know, meet the needs that you need to meet, sometimes it makes sense to shuffle. It makes sense to shuffle some things if you have the option to do the thing that makes you happier. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know what life is going to look like. I'm just out here treading water like so many of us are. Um, but that's also my success is that, Like I said, I've been a little bit happier with what I've been choosing to do with my time in terms of like where I pick up jobs and what I'm doing. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see if I update y'all again in a couple weeks or a couple months. And I'm like, actually, this is my struggle. I'm back where I was because I needed the money. I don't know. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening to that. Let's dive into why it's important to stay single after abuse. I have talked about this before in my own experience with my abuser. Um, a lot of abusive people will target people who just got out of really like hard relationships, abusive or not. Um, you're vulnerable when you first come out of a relationship. So a lot of abusive people will target those people or while you're still in it, they'll target you. And there's that temptation. I know it's a lot easier to be like, well, I already have a person here. I don't have to worry about being single. I don't have to get on the apps. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that. Cause there's this person they're waiting for me. They're ready for me. They want to do this with me. Um, it's not good, y'all. It's not good. Um, so let's just say like the person is abusive. Then you're in a world of hurt. Then go back and listen to every single one of my podcasts because there's a high likelihood that you're going to experience many, if not all of the things that I talk about, because that abuse is there, that abuse is happening. There's a reason why they came after you while you were at that time. It's going to be yucky, right? 
even if that person is not abusive, even if that person is okay, I'm sorry, in my mind, anyone who reached out to me when I was newly single and had just said that I was single is predatory, period, or extremely unhealthy. Because if you think it's a good time to date someone when they're going through a breakup or trying to leave a marriage or whatever, that's not normal. That's not healthy. That's not good. I know y'all are dropping like flies out here because you don't want to hear this. Some of you are like, um, and a lot of people will argue with me. A lot of people will come out here and be like, not me, not my case. This happened. Everything worked out. We you hauled. We did this. We did that. That's fine. That's one time, maybe 10 times that's happened. And it's been great to someone. A lot of times it's not though, y'all, because what happens again, abusive, mm -mm, bad, no good. We're not going to dive into that too much because I, the podcast is there. Not abusive. What happens? One or both of you is bringing lots of trauma and pain and stuff that you have not had even in like a moment to dive into and process and heal. You're bringing that into a new relationship, especially if y'all have kids. If one or both of you has kids involved, please take the time because now you are so busy. You're running around with the kids. The kids are keeping you up at night. You have very little time together as a couple. You have very little time to just yourself because you're taking care of all these little humans. And maybe you have pets too. And you have jobs and you have all this stuff. When are you going to sit down and actually get to work through that stuff? And I know some of y'all are going to say, I did. I do. I go to therapy. I do this. I do that. I talk to my partner sometimes about it. Sometimes I talk to whoever. That's great. Keep doing that. That's good. But in my opinion, when you have a partner and all that other stuff going on, even if you don't have kids and dogs and whatever, you don't really have that much time to just sit and be alone or travel alone and be on a plane or be looking out a window on a train or not travel and just be sitting at your house. Maybe you're in the bathtub, maybe you're cooking or whatever, and you're just reflecting. And you have that time to actually feel what you've been through and think about what you've been through and think about why or why not. Like, why did I... Why did I leave that relationship? What is it that I didn't like about the relationship? What hurt me in that relationship? What do I not want to carry into my own future, let alone another person's, right? I don't want to carry this into my future. So circle back if we need to. Um, when I when I got away from my abuser, I very I'm so lucky. This not all of us have this in the moment because we've got so many other things going on. I feel very lucky that I had the foresight to be like, uh-uh, mm -mm, I will not be dating. No matter what I feel, if I miss having someone next to me at night, I don't, I didn't. I don't care if I miss having someone to talk to. I don't care if whatever, nobody's coming near me anytime soon. Like I said, I have a kid. I don't want anyone putting him through that. But at the same time, it's not just like paranoia that everyone's going to be a bad guy. Cause some people are like, oh my gosh, you're going to miss out just because you think that's not what it is. I love being single. I love my space. I love the amount of healing I've been able to do. And I don't have a lot of free time either. I have that kid. He's homeschooled. I'm with him a lot. I have a dog. I have hobbies. I have jobs. Like there's so much going on. And I feel like it's been such a gift to give myself this time. And I will continue. I'm coming up. I have been single for two years now. I have not been no contact for two years. I am just a couple days away from that. Um, and this isn't me sitting here being like, you need to be like me. Especially if you have been abused, you should never date again. You should just be out here doing, no, do what you want. If your goal is to have a partner, if your goal is to have a healthy relationship with someone, do what you want, do what you're going to do. Cause you're going to do it anyway. But like, please, please, please take some time for yourself. Take some time to heal and expect the same from whoever's coming along. Expect that that person has taken some time as well. And that that person has done some healing because you do not want one or both of your stuff to come back and bite you in the butt. So that's when I left my abuser. When I left my marriage to the person that I had been with for six, I don't know. I've known him for 10 years now. I was with him for several years, five, six years. I don't know how long we were together. Um, it was a while. We were married. I had a lot of pain from that relationship. I brought in pain to that relationship, even though we had both been single for a while. So here again, folks, we had both been single for a while. We were both living it up in Pensacola, Florida, early to mid twenties, doing our thing, living alone, not depending on anyone. Like we were both just like super independent people, but neither of us were super aware of our childhood trauma. 
or childhood emotional neglect. Um, I had absolutely buried thick, deep down, horrible, whatever, lots of trauma, not just from my childhood, but from my adult life, from my young adult life. There were things that I only just looked at, like looked dead in the eyeball and said, I need to acknowledge that you're in there because I completely blacked you out. And this happened and this went on for a year in my life. That went on for six months in my life. That was a one-time thing, but that really, really needed to be dealt with. Um, there's a lot of that going on. And in terms of my ex-husband, I don't even know, y'all. I don't even know what that guy is hiding. That's not your business. It's not my business anymore. But like, we both brought that into a marriage without even really knowing because that's how we were raised. We were raised by people who had to do that. They had to bury everything they went through. You could not tell that this person did this to you that was, you know, an authority figure in town when you were 14 because people would shame you for what that person chose to do to you. Probably a lot of you can fill in some blanks on that. I had experience like that. A lot of us had experiences like that, right? You're our parents, our grandparents, their parents, you just shoved it down. And so that's where we come from, right? And this is what we bring into our daily lives. And so what happened with me, and this is why I decided to do this episode. Um, I'm sitting here like, let me be the, what's it called? The, oh, I can't think of the term. Oh no. Um, it'll probably come to me like at the end of the episode or right when I finish it up. But let me be the example of what not to do because what I had to do was as I started releasing the things from that abusive relationship, getting it out of my system, healing it, acknowledging it, doing all that stuff, it made space for other things to boil up. So I'm sitting here a year in going, why am I so sad about my marriage now when we haven't been together for three years, four years? Why am I sad about that? Why am I mad about that? Why am I whatever about this thing that happened 20 years ago? Because I shoved it down because it was still in there. So whenever, if I was showing up in a relationship ever after all of that, I would still be bringing from a marriage from four years ago, that stuff. So I have started healing. Well, it's been a year or so now that I started digging through that. Um, also because I co-parent with my son's dad and I want to look at him as my co-parent who I am not in a intimate partnership with. And that doesn't mean that like I was still viewing him that way after I left my abuser. I was like, well, okay, now I have, no. It's just, if you haven't healed from that, you're still interacting with that person with that pain from when that person was with you four years ago or whatever. And I wanted to be able to look at him like, you know, yeah, we had this stuff gone and then you had to deal with me while I was in an abusive relationship. That had to suck for you. And also, you know, I'm not very proud of how I acted sometimes, which he knows. Um, I wanted to heal from the pain that I had from that relationship. I don't want to pass it down to my son. I don't want it to affect our co-parenting relationship in any way. Um, and so, yeah, I had to go back and I had to dig through that. And I had to, you know, admit where I didn't understand what a relationship was going to be like, what a marriage was going to be like. I didn't know who I fully was. I, he didn't know who he was, like all of that stuff. That's sad and disappointing and frustrating and confusing can be painful. Um, you know, how the marriage ended, why the marriage, all of that stuff. So I just like, I really do care about all of you. And I don't know who's sitting here listening to me right now. I just don't want you to have to do that. And you probably are going to have to. You probably do. You're probably listening going, dang it, I didn't deal with my relationship with Jerry or Jackie from 17 years ago. I still can't forgive myself for what I did. I have one of those too. I have a relationship from 2012 that I'm not very happy about how I left that. And you know why I left that? Because he was good to me. He was very good to me. I'm queer, so probably would have had to end anyway. I'm a lesbian. Um, so if you don't know, like that wouldn't have been able to continue had I gone down that path and figured out who I was. If I never figured out who I was, maybe, I don't know, who knows, that's not what happened. But, um, I left him because I was bored because he was treating me well, period. At the time I had all these excuses. Um, this is something that I just never talked to. I never like would admit this, but now I'm like, this is the truth. And a lot of people who experience childhood emotional neglect have done something like this. Read the book, Running on Empty, by the way, by Dr. Joni's Webb. I have it right here. That's why I looked at it. Um, running on Empty. 
you will leave a happy, healthy, good relationship. And then you will find yourself in one that is horrible. And that is what I did in 2012. That's what I did. I don't want to do that again. I want to forgive myself for what I did to that person. I want to forgive myself for jumping into a freaking horrible situation that I didn't know about that I deleted and only remembered when I was being abused by this other person, because I was like, why do I know this feeling? I've been here before. And I remembered, and I remembered stuff from my childhood. And I started being like, oh my gosh, I'm repeating all these patterns from my childhood. And it doesn't have to be like this. So anyway, I know I just told you all a lot of things that like, I haven't like, I haven't like posted videos about like that breakup and this and that, whatever. Uh, and I probably sound really problematic right now. This is over the course of my lifetime, y'all. Stop judging me. <laughs> um, but I, like I was saying, I really genuinely care about you. And I really want you to be happy and healthy and safe. And I don't want you to run into the arms of an abusive person because that person is there. They're literally waiting for someone who's extremely fragile. My abuser made their move when my son's dad was out of the country and couldn't be here to see what was going on and be like, I don't think this is healthy. You never move this fast with me. I've never seen you act like this before. Why are you being so weird? What's going on with that person? He was in another country. And two, my dog had just been killed right in front of me. And I was extremely, extremely vulnerable. This is what abusive people do. You just come out of a relationship. You've just had a trauma. I do not want that for you. I do not want that for you. And I also don't want you to have to heal from a maybe not that bad relationship, but still something that you like we're humans. Like I said, it might be a situation ship. Maybe you hung out with someone for six weeks and it wasn't, it's not that serious, right? It's not that serious. You only hung out a handful of times because you have jobs, you have other things going on, but you still had this idea that maybe it could work out. I don't know. We're seeing where it's going. You shared some intimate moments with them. You need time to process that. You're a human. You're not a robot. I know some people are better at it. Some people are better at, you know, maybe they're poly, maybe they're, they literally are just out here chilling, whatever. Some people are not. Some people act like they are, think that they are, but really they're not. And it hurts. You need to deal with that stuff, y'all. You need to take some time to think about it and acknowledge what you're feeling and be like, it's okay. I'm a human. I did really enjoy being with that person. It wasn't working out. I'm allowed to be sad about this. Instead of just the first person who comes along, you're like, that's okay. I'll just date this person because y'all again, that's going to hurt you. That And it, it accumulates. It accumulates. Okay. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's do this together. <laughs> Let's support each other and making healthier choices. And I hope that as you listen to this, you don't feel like I'm just sitting here judging you and lecturing you and telling you, you have to do this, you have to do that. Cause that's not what I'm about. I just told y'all the dumb stuff that I've done and the ways that I've buried my own trauma, but also I'm going to hold myself to a higher standard now and I'm not going to bury my trauma anymore. I don't drink anymore. I don't run from it anymore. I want, I don't want to feel it. Oh my gosh. I do not want to feel the pain. Sometimes I just sit there and I'm like, yeah, that did happen to you. Yeah. You did go through that. Yeah. You did make that choice. Like whatever, like that sucks. That's a hard thing to have to carry around. Also, you don't have to carry that around anymore. Like it's just like, I don't want to carry that stuff around anymore. I don't want you to carry that stuff around anymore. So, you know, I'm not saying to never date again, but be kind to yourself and know that you are human and you are fragile. Don't pretend like you're not like, I'm not saying that you're like a little baby and you can't handle anything. Don't pretend like you're a robot. You're not. Marina and the Diamonds. I think she just goes by Marina now. I am not a robot. Guess what? I'm not a robot. <laughs> just listen to the song. It's a great song. She's great. Okay. That's all. I'm getting tired. It's time for me to go to bed. Um, thanks for hanging out with me tonight. I hope that this was helpful. And again, that you're not like, oh my gosh, Lindsay just gave me a rule. And she said I couldn't do this because no, don't, don't. Just think about it. Just sit with it. Think about it. Okay. Thank you for listening. Um, if you want to work with me for any reason, I am a certified trauma recovery coach. You can go to my website, thelindsaygoodman.com, or if you want to book with me directly, you already know, just go straight to calendly.com slash Lindsay Goodman. I have 30 and 60 minute sessions available. I have a six week program that I know some people have really benefited from. Um, and I also am doing a monthly support group. Um, that has been going really well so far. So I will keep doing that as long as people still have interest spots are limited. So definitely go check that out. If you don't see it on my calendar, it's because I just haven't set a time for the next one. So check back later. 
Um, okay. Oh, if you like this podcast, please rate, review, and subscribe. I really want to get this into the ears of people who need this the most, and your interaction really does help make that happen. I very much appreciate it. And um, that's all I have for now. So take care of yourself. Go drink some water, and I'll be back next week with more.